Hello, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Today is a Mother's Day in America, and I'm here to wish every one of you real mothers, good mothers, struggling mothers, trying mothers, a happy Mother's Day. And those of you who are also mothers-to-be, I wish you a happy Mother's Day. The Lord, those of you who are looking unto the Lord for the fruit of the womb, the Lord will bless you with the fruit of the womb and will make you a good mother for your children and will cause your, your coast to be enlarged. You will enlarge your coast, it will bless you, and you will multiply exceedingly in His presence. Amen. Well, as we're celebrating Mother's Day, um, this day, I see this day as a day that you acquire wisdom to your knowledge or knowledge to your wisdom. And uh, I'm talking to you today about the mother's sympathy. Many mothers have strayed away from God. Many mothers are uh, uh, addicted. Many mothers have dumped their children. Many mothers are even using their, their children for profit. Many mothers have led their children into the den of Satan. Today, I want to read from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 12. And I'm going to read from verse 12 to verse 16. And I want you to follow me. The Bible says, Now when he, talking about Jesus, came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bear, buyer, and they that bear the stood, they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a few on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us. And that God hath, hath visited his people. Let me tell you something. When you notice this passage that I just read. The Bible says when Jesus was near to that city. He saw a funeral procession. In which there were different kind of people. The name of the city was Nain. There were different kind of people. Pastors were there. Elders were there. Were there. Olders were there. Youngs were there. Children were there. Sadness on people's faces. But that doesn't move Jesus. The Bible says when he saw the mother. But when he saw the mother. He had compassion on her. And he said to her, weep not. I'm saying to every one of you mothers out there today who are struggling over one or the other of your children. I'm saying to every one of you mothers today, you've been married for so long, but you're crying because you have not had the fruit of the womb for your husband. I'm, 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 I'm saying to every one of you mothers today who are still trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I'm saying to all of you Mothers today who are crying over your children because they strayed away from God. I'm saying to all of you mothers today who are not happy at all. Maybe you, you lost your children at a younger age. And you couldn't stop crying over it. Whatever the situation is in your life that causes you to, to tear. That causes you to cry. Jesus is saying to you today. Fear not. Weep not. Your, your weep time is over. Your crying time is over. You have cried your last tears. Cry not. Weep not. Stop crying. Amen. Jesus immediately walked to that coffin. Touched it. And he spoke to that dead son in that coffin. Rise. And the boy rise up, sat up, and began to talk. Jesus is here today to put a smile on your weeping face. 
is is here today to put a, a, a joy on your cheering face. Is here to, today to restore the joy in your heart. Weep not. The Mother's Day is a day that some mother will sit down and begin to think of their past. It's a day that mothers will begin to think those who who lost their children will begin to remember all their their dead children. The mother, the Mother's Day is the day that some people are rejoicing on their living children. The Mother's Day uh, is a day where, when uh, so, some children will bring their parents to take their parents out, take their mothers out to rejoice, buy food and everything, buy gift, buy flowers. But the Mother's Day is also the same day where some people have no kids to buy flowers for them or take them out to eat, and they tear, they weep over this. Weep not, Jesus said. Amen. It was the sympathy of this woman <clears throat> that causes Jesus to stop. Not the crying of the whole group of people that were there, pastor, elder, bishop. Not the crying of the church members, brothers, sisters, friends. Not the crying of the old and young. Not the crying on any one of their faces. But when Jesus saw the tear of, on this woman's face, the Bible says he had compassion. Those mothers who shed tears before the Lord for their children today, those mothers who shed tears for their marriages today, those mothers who shed tears before the Lord for their businesses, for their homes today, Jesus is saying to you, weep not. Your weeping time is over. Your weeping time is over. The, the problem I have is how is it that some mother, uh, uh, it, 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 how is it today that there are some, some mothers, many mothers who don't care. Many mothers who don't even care to fight. Many mothers who don't even care to pray about their children. Who don't even care to pray about their household. Who don't even fight for their family. Who don't even fight for their business. They've given up. They quit it. When Jesus has not quit it on you, you don't have to quit. Hear me and hear me well. When mothers stop praying for their families, the families is in trouble. That family will suffer. Especially their children will perish. When mothers stop praying for their families, that family will suffer in the hand of Satan. And that's when Satan gains the chance and begins to destroy the home. That's when Satan gains the chance to penetrate and begin to instigate chaos, confusion in the home. But when the mother returns, when mothers return to their rightful place as the anchor of home, the money strongholds get demolished. The devil is afraid of them. When a mother, mother, when mother returns to their rightful place in God and become prayerful, they break down strongholds. They destroy mountains. They break barriers. A praying mother, show me a praying mother and I'll show you a victorious woman. Show me a prayerless woman and I'll show you a mother who is already in the anchor for Satan. As mothers protect and uphold and defend her children, so also is God. When you read it, when you read Psalm 17, Psalm 36, Psalm 57, Psalm 63, Psalm 91, God's role is likened to the to that of a mother in those passages. Mothers they protect, mothers they uphold, mothers they defend their children. So does God. God protect us under the shadow of his wings. That's where we find refuge. And that's where we can hide until danger is over. Amen. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7, he says, Likewise ye husband, dwell with them according to the knowledge given honor unto the wife, as unto weaker verses, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not 
it, it be hindered. Some men don't know this. Some men do know it and pretend they don't know it. Why do men pray and the prayer don't ask, don't get answered? Why do you pray for so long and it seems like you don't have answers to a prayer? Those of you who maltreat your wife, those of you who treat your wife like nothing, those of you who abuse your wife, those of you who violate your marriage, there is no prayer you can pray to God. I like to call a spade a spade. No, not as much prayer as you pray to God that you will get an answer for. You can pray for years. If you don't honor your wife, if you don't treat your wife as a weaker vessel, if you don't treat her well, like God treats his church delicately, you may have your prayers hindered. Your prayers may not be answered. He says, treat them according to, he says, according to knowledge given honor, according to knowledge, given honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Your eye is a weaker vessel. You don't want your eyes to break. You don't want nothing to poke into your eyes. Some of us have a jewelry, a glass, crystal glass cup in the house that we don't want nobody to touch or break. So many things we cherish to ourselves that we keep as a fragile vessel. We don't want, when you package your stuff, you, you, you write fragile on it so that people will handle it with care. That's the way you need to handle your wife, with care, with love and honor. And she will reciprocate. You're crying, a man is crying, there is no, this woman don't know how to treat me. You don't cook for me, you don't love me. Sow that seed first. When you sow the seed of love, you will reap the fruit of love. Amen. When you treat your wife with honor and respect, that woman will reciprocate it. Amen. As unto weaker vessel, if you don't want your prayers to be hindered. We can see that mother, a mother's role is so vital that a father cannot get his prayer answered if he does not if it dishonored or disrespect them. So many of our fathers are messed up in that regards. So many fathers are still messing up in that regards. Dishonoring their wife. Disrespecting their wife. God has his favor placed upon our mothers. And also you can note why is it that women are more prone to attack? Attack of the devil? Attack from anywhere, any, from all source. Because of the favor that God placed upon them. Let me tell you something. Mothers, take note today being your special day as a Mother's Day. When you go back to your rightful place in God. And you rekindle the fire of prayer. Rekindled, re rebuild your altar of prayer. The devil is terrified when you pray. <laughs> the devil is terrified of a praying mother. He's afraid of a praying mother. So I'm inviting you back to the presence of the Lord today. Mother's Day is a day to come back to God. A day for mother to appreciate God more. A day for mother to reconcile with God. Maybe you strayed away from the Lord. And this is also affecting your home. This is affecting your children. I'm inviting you back to the presence of the Lord today. Mothers, I urge you to pray more. In season and out season. Surround your children with prayer. Surround your husband with prayer. Surround your household with prayer. Surround your business with prayer. Ask for the power of prayer. Ask for the divine power to rekindle the fire of prayer in your life. This is a special day and the Lord is willing to grant your request. I pray for all you mothers that as you are celebrated today, you will not know the grave of your children. You will not die young. You will reap the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus. As you have labored hard over your children. 
as you have worked hard over your children, as you have suffered a lot over your children, you even suffered abuses over your children because you, have, you want your children to have a father in their life. So you are end, enduring series of hardship. You are enduring series of abuses. I pray today that the Lord will bless you, will replenish you. Every lost glory, every lost battle, the Lord will replenish you today in the name of Jesus. And as you are suffering over these children, you will live to reap the fruit of your labor over them in the name of Jesus. When your fruit shall be ripened and you will be summoned to come and, to come and pluck them, you will not be found missing in the name of Jesus. The good Lord will strengthen you. The good Lord will uphold you. Your children will not die young. You will not cry over your children. You will not weep over your children. Their glory will shine. Their destiny will speak in the name of Jesus. I speak unto the foundation of your children today. And I command their foundation to rise up. I command their destiny to speak in the name of Jesus. You will do good. You will conquer with your seed. I seal this prayer with the, with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Amen.